Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. Today I want to show you four different ways that you can use to access the dark web. Although the dark web is a place where you can buy lots of dodgy stuff, counterfeit documentation, stolen credit cards, all your stolen passwords are there, it's not as scary as it seems. In fact, with the dark web, privacy is king and journalists use it all the time to communicate in secret. So today I want to show you four different ways and how you can browse the dark web safely and privately. And don't forget to stick around to the very end because I'm going to show you my favorite websites that I access on the dark web. One of the fastest ways to browse the dark web is to use the Brave browser. Just go to brave.com, click on Get Brave. That's going to download the browser. Once that's downloaded, just run through the install like any other application. Then when it's installed, just open up the application and it will look something like this. Now the easiest way to get connected to the Tor network is to click on the options in the top right hand corner and then click on new private window of Tor. Once you do that, you will see in the top left hand corner that did say disconnected and then it said connected. So the Tor is connected successfully. That is it. That is you connected to the dark web. The second way to get connected to the dark web is to use the Tor browser. Again, this is another browser that you need to download and install. So all you have to do is go to the tarproject.org and then in the top right hand corner, you're going to click on download Tor browser. Then you're going to scroll down and you're going to choose the operating system that you need. And all you have to do is click on download. Once that has downloaded, just run through the install again like any other application and then open up the Tor browser. When you do that, you will get this screen. So now this is asking me to connect to the Tor network. Now before I get connected to the Tor network, I want to make sure my browser is set up correctly. So using the options on the top right hand corner, just click on this and then go down to settings and under privacy and security. I'm going to click in there and you're going to scroll all the way down until you see the security and the security level. Just make sure yours is set to safest. That way any browser that you go to and if it has JavaScript or something running in the background, your browser won't automatically run that. So that is the safest way to have it set up. So let's close the settings. Then all I'm gonna do is click on connect and that is gonna get us connected to the Tor network. And as you can see, that is us connected. Third way is again using the Tor browser, but this time we're gonna add an extra layer of security. This time I'm gonna get connected to VPN before I connect to the Tor network. Now, there's a lot of debate on the internet whether you need to do this or not. Personally, I do it anyway, just in case. I prefer my connection to my ISP to be fully encrypted. I don't want my internet service provider even seeing that I'm on the dark web. And if I connect to a VPN beforehand, then they can't see that that traffic is encrypted. So connect to a VPN first and then in the Tor network. The VPN provider that I use is called NordVPN. I've used these guys for years. I've found them to be the most reliable. If you want a VPN, then I highly suggest NordVPN. Honestly, it's one of the best ones I've used. I'll leave a link in the description below. And depending on the subscription that you sign up for, you can get up to two months off that subscription. So what I would do is I would open up Nord. I would get connected to the VPN first. I just click on quick connect and that will connect out to a location closest to me. So that is connected. Then the next thing I would do is open up the Tor browser. And then all you have to do here is click on connect and that's going to connect out and get you connected to the dark web. The final option to access the dark web is to use Tails. You can download the Tails ISO from their website and you can build a bootable USB drive. Once you have the USB drive, you can boot up to that from any computer and you can access the dark web. It uses Tor by default, so it's just really, really simple. Let me take you through the process to make a bootable USB drive. You're gonna need two things. You need to get the download for Tails. That's very, very easy. Just go to tails.net. Once you're here, just click on install Tails and then you're gonna click on this button at the bottom it says download tails only for USB sticks. Click on that and then you're going to click on download. So download the ISO for tails. Once you've done that, you can get Rufus. Rufus is a tool that you can use to create a bootable USB drive. So get both of those files, get them downloaded and then we can move on to the next stage. Once you have both of those things downloaded, you want to grab yourself a USB drive and we're going to plug this into the computer and then we'll open up Rufus and create the bootable USB drive. So I've plugged the USB drive into my Windows laptop. Rufus is a tool that only works on Windows, by the way. So you need a Windows laptop to make the bootable USB drive. So just remember that. So I've plugged it into my laptop and I'm just going to open up the Rufus software. Click on yes. And as you can see, it's found my existing USB drive. So this is an existing version of Tails. I'm just going to overwrite that. All I have to do is select the ISO, open that, 
and then all I have to do is click on start and that's going to go through the process to build that USB drive that will destroy everything that's on the USB drive so just remember that. Just click OK and once it's finished now we'll boot up a laptop and we get started on Tails. So get your USB drive and we're going to connect it to the laptop. Once you have the USB drive connected we're just going to hit the power button and I'm going to hit F12. Now F12 is a key that I have to use. On yours it might be different. Okay, so I'm going to choose option two. This is my USB drive. Hit down and hit enter. So this is the setup page. From here you can choose the language keyboard layout. You can also choose if you want persistent storage. This will just mean that you'll be allowed to store certain things on this uh, USB drive, such as like Wi-Fi passwords and bookmarks and documents and stuff. I just genuinely leave that off. It's the default option, which is good. So just hit on start tails. Now before you can obviously browse the internet, you do need to go up here and you need to make sure your Wi-Fi is connected. So let me do that first. Okay, great. So as you can see, my Wi-Fi is connected. And as soon as you connect, it brings up this screen. So this is going to ask me, do I want to connect to Tor automatically? I'm just going to click yes. And I'm going to connect to Tor. Perfect, that is you. So you are now browsing the dark web on Tails. Now I did say I would show you some websites that you can access on the dark web. And before I show you those, while you're in the dark web, there's lots of different stuff. You're gonna see a whole bunch of different things and just be careful navigating around. So this is two different websites that you can access. This is the Hidden Wiki. This is quite a good website to find your way around and you, there's lots of different contents along the, the right hand side. Have a look through and it is quite an interesting page. You'll find a lot of stuff on there. And the next website is Amea. This one here is like the unofficial search engine for the dark web. So it's a good place to start if you just generally want to search around the dark web. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you have fun on the dark web. Just be careful. Don't get in trouble. And I will see you next time.